Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counter, online here with Tim, a.k.a. the Bald Man. Hi, everybody. What's going on, Tim? Listen, we're talking starts and sits for week six. Are you ready? To go? That's hard to say, starts and sits week six. You <laughs> yeah, ready to go? It is a tongue twister. Yeah, man, I'm ready to rock. Big episode, guys. If you guys have any stars and sits questions, we try to cover everything here, going through every position, giving you all the optimal plays, and, of course, all of the sits, guys, that have a tougher matchup. Now, understand, guys, disclaimer, because I get asked all the time, Joe, I have a really good player. Do I really sit him because he's got a tough matchup? It depends on who else you have. There's so many variables, Tim, that we can't cover every scenario. It's a two-quarterback league. One quarterback league is the, uh, did he have a good week last week? Did he have a bad week last week? Who are you starting? Who are you sitting? Who's the matchup? Who's the DB they're going up against? How, how is that rush defense? There's so much to cover, but we're trying to cover as much as we can. We're giving you the auto plays and every tough matchup versus position. That's all we can do, Tim. That's it. Let, let me give you a prime example right now. Aaron Rodgers has the fourth <laughs> hardest challenge this week, but he's gone steadily <laughs> like 19, 25, 33 the last yeah. three games. Do you play him this week? We're going to talk about that. That's, That's right. Gonna and we're going to talk about it real soon because we start with quarterbacks. But before we do, head on over to guys. This is very, very important. Get your Manscaped trimmer. I don't have one on me. It's over there. I should have brought one in on the show. But get your Manscaped trimmer, guys. It's a lawnmower 3.0. Head on over to manscaped.com. Use promo code SHOWERLION. Why? Because you're a lion that likes to shower. Shower lion at manscaped.com. Save yourself 20% on your purchases. Head on over there right now. There's also a link below. And of course, guys, we talked about this. Hit the smash. Smash thumbs up because, again, it helps Tim grow hair on top of his head. So please, guys, leave a thumbs up. It helps Tim. Right, Tim? It's working. It, it's slowly working. There is a huge delay on it, though. I mean, I'm showing like one new one every week. Yeah, and, so, and I know we get more smashes than that. So yeah, so please leave a thumbs up, guys, and of course leave some stars and sits questions below. People ask me how do I get direct access. It's so tough, Tim. There's so many people, so many DMs, so many people. There is no way I can get direct access to everybody, but I try to get to as many comments below. So leave them below. And finally, guys, fantasy uh, flick chat below. There's a link below. Join us. We chat during games. Now, mind you, there's no game tonight, Thursday night, unfortunately. It sucks because, Tim, I, I had the Monday night football, the Tuesday night football. I'm like, yes, Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. Thursday night football. So it's like, yeah, you gave me the Tuesday night, but you took away my Thursday night. I'm pissed off. Yeah, man, it sucks. I'm always looking forward to a Thursday night game. I mean, thankfully, I've got a family thing going on tonight, and I would have squeezed the game in no matter what because it's later, but now I just don't even have to worry about it. It sucks, but it is what it is. I want some football, Tim. All right, so let's move on here. Let's start off here with the let's since we start off with the rough matchups. Let's talk about some guys that have some rough matchups versus position at the quarterback position. We're gonna go through quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, and we're gonna save our favorite everybody's favorite running back to the end okay so let's start off with this i mean joe burrow arguably the toughest matchup versus position against indy now he's had a mediocre week last week with around six points the week before and the prior weeks before that 19 and 23 points respectively in those weeks joe burrow looking good he does have a tough matchup so i implore you guys to be cautious if you do have a better option this is what i'm saying like a better option consider it it is a tough matchup to me, there's got to be a better option than Joe Burrow this week. And believe me, I'm holding him on my team with Matt Ryan. Not thrilled with Ryan, but I'm obviously going to roll Ryan this week. Yeah. Listen, Teddy Bridgewater. Listen, second hardest matchup for his position against, position against Chicago. Had two amazing weeks, 24 and 27 weeks, respectively, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a guy that I have, Tim, in a two-quarterback league. I don't have a third quarterback. I did, but there was injuries, stuff like that. But listen. I have to start him. So, and he's been hot. And this is another scenario where, like, if you don't have a better option, you got you got to roll with Teddy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I had the option, I would definitely not be playing him. I uh, just don't think he's got what it takes to get it done right now against such a hard defense. I think it's going to be a pretty low scoring game. Yeah, yeah. But if you got to roll with him, you got to roll with him. You just got to hope and pray sometimes. This is this, this is next guy here. Third hardest matchup for his position is Nick Foles. 13 points last week. Listen, with this guy, here's a perfect example of he's got a tough matchup. He's not that great anyway. So if you have a better option, Nick Foles, I would try to dodge him. Uh, and we talked about Aaron Rodgers, fourth hardest versus position, but how do you sit him? I think I think he's gonna put up some points, but I think they they have a tough matchup here. They do they really genuinely do here. It is an away game against Aaron Rodgers. I tend to see that he plays a little bit better at home. Aaron Rodgers, again, if you don't have a better option, I mean, you got to start him, but he does have it in tough this week. Yeah, and as far as DFS, he's a pretty steep price for having such a tough matchup. So obviously everyone else believes in him, but man, you still, 
It, it's hard. You know, I, I would put him in and be pretty happy with a 20 pointer this week. All right, let's, let's work our other tough matchups here up to the 10th hardest matchup versus position. So we said Aaron Rodgers is fourth hardest, fifth hardest, Kyle Allen, Phillip Rivers, Jimmy Garoppolo, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, Carson Wentz, all having tough matchups versus position. Uh, and again, the 11th hardest versus position, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper here, is Andy Dalton playing Arizona. Now he's coming in, a lot of people questioning him, a lot of people picking him up off the waiver wire to cover uh, their Dak Prescott injury. Do you start him? That's a big question. Listen, I mean, if you don't have a better option, we talk about it, but it is the 11th hardest matchup, arguably, against the defense. So he he doesn't have it super easy if you are considering him, Tim. Yeah, to me, 11th hardest isn't that bad. He's got a pretty good offense around him. He should be able to find a way. Look for safe and reliable type of points, and if he puts up a monster or even a 25-er, then you should be really thrilled. It does have great weapons. All right, so that's easy, easy matchups, easy peasy ones. Uh, but again, there's no guarantees in fantasy because even though you got an easy matchup, you could put up a dud. Let's go over some names with some easy matchups and start accordingly. Because again, for example, Daniel Jones, third easiest matchup versus position. But who do you start? Do you start Daniel Jones or Aaron Rodgers? I might roll out Aaron Rodgers over Daniel Jones. Doesn't matter how hard that the position is. So that's a perfect example. But Kirk Cousins, Pat Mahomes, great matchups. Daniel Jones. Um, I believe now I'm not exactly sure here, but I believe Drew Locke, uh, is coming back here, but I'm looking at the wrong guy here. Sorry. They're playing Denver here. I'm talking Brian Hoyer. I think, sorry, Cam Newton's coming back here. So Brian Hoyer, I believe is not playing, but if Cam Newton plays, which I think he is, he does have an easy matchup. Now I was looking at the matchup and thinking about Drew Locke as well. If Drew Locke plays, again, I would be suspect with him playing. He has a mid-range matchup against New England. I'd be cautious with him looking at this particular matchup. But Newton does have it easier against Denver. Matt Stafford, easy matchup. Ben Roethlisberger versus Cleveland. I think this is going to be a great matchup. Uh, guys with similar records. I believe they're both 4-1, and one, if I'm not correct. I don't have it in front of me. Both these guys have great records. Divisional game. It's going to be good. Gardner Minshew, relatively easy matchup. And Kyler Murray and Matt Ryan, both easy matchups. Now, Matt Ryan, it is the 12th hardest matchup for his position, so I don't want to say it's super easy, but he is playing Minnesota in a desperation game to save his name because it's it's must right now. Everybody talk about him on Matt Ryan or traded or whatever it may be. But, uh, but yeah, would you start Matt Ryan this week, Tim? I, I kind of have to. I already mentioned it. So I, I only really consider my FTFN league. That's the only one I really talk about right now, and I'm holding Matt Ryan and Joe Burrow. Of course, I'm going to play Matt Ryan over Joe Burrow this week. What's your record in the fan to fan league, Tim? Oh, my God. Because <laughs> you're not listening to me. Why'd you draft Eckler? <laughs> I didn't draft Eckler, actually. So my team name is Echo My Balls, but I did not get Eckler. I had a uh, second overall pick, I believe. So I yeah, took Saquon. Saquon. So yeah. I'm dying there. My receivers are doing pretty damn well, but my running backs are hurting big time. So oh, yeah. I am super lucky. Madison is in this week, right? So yeah. Well, I don't know. They're saying that from what I heard, the coach talked to Dalvin Cook. Apparently, they want to rest him, but he said he's feeling good. So I think he might play. You know what? I'm playing Madison no matter what. He'll, he'll be in. He'll take yeah. a bulk of the carries this week, I'm sure, no matter what Cookie says. That's what I'm thinking. I think they're going to rest him either way. and Because they're going into a bye week, so why play Cook now? I mean, it'll be interesting. They do need the win, so yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see. All right, so those are your uh, easy matchups. Let's go for some. Uh, we talked about easy and tough matchups, so we're done here with quarterback, unless there's any other questions, Tim. No, nah, man, I'm all good. All right, let's move on to the wide receiver position. Guys, remember, smash the thumbs up. really helps the channel. And, of course, follow Fan to Fan Network below. Everyone keeps saying Tim's in the FTFN League. Well, what that is, guys, is we've created uh, a website, Fan to Fan Network, with all the top influencers all in one spot giving you amazing advice. In fact, we do a virtual tailgate every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., so make sure you guys tune into that. Fan to Fan Network below or FTFN on YouTube. Make sure you guys follow. All right, easy matchups versus position. Easy peasy, like Tim likes to say. DeAndre Hopkins, easy matchup. Had a good week last week, coming off a mediocre week the week before. that, And that was a huge touchdown catch by uh, DeAndre Hopkins from Kyler Murray. Inflated his numbers, but again, he's been pretty consistent. Uh, and then again, Chase Claypool coming off a huge 46 points. Now, Deontay Johnson should be back, should be healthy. What a dud last week. Now, I've got, I'm in this league, Tim, where basically you can start up to, I think it's seven wide receivers. It's crazy. You and Sorry, sorry. It's 11 players total. I think you can go three to five wide receivers, I should say. So I could max out on my wide receivers and start both Deontay and Claypool. And I'm debating on doing that. 
But with Claypool there, Juju, I mean, it could be volatile on who gets the ball. But I will tell you, against Cleveland, they've got a relatively easy matchup. So what do you think? Is it going to be another good week for Claypool? Does he emerge as the wide receiver one? Do you see a bounce back game of Juju? Is Deontay, what is your kind of best guess on this? I don't know if I would call him the wide receiver one yet. However, it definitely seems like he has some nice rapport with Big Ben. I would be very happy to plug in Claypool this week and expect a, a decent result out of him. You know, it's, it's not going to be another 46 or I'm sure, but it could no. be fairly high, man. I mean, they're going to throw, throw, throw. So uh, Claypool looking at like a 15 to 20 solid. Like that's I a solid. Imagine. I can't imagine sitting him at all. So yeah, Chase Claypool, stardom. Uh, Calvin Ridley, I mean last week 25 points week before is zero so you're getting some volatility there they are playing minnesota it is a relatively easy matchup versus position julio jones to my understanding he is still questionable and again even if he comes back is that hammy in good position in good shape we don't know right it's questionable uh russell gage had a crazy stupid weak game it was weak man it was four points and again he's been really crap in the bed i think he had a good like week one ever since then I, I didn't have any expectations for gage everybody did after like week one or two when he had that big game I'm like dude there's julio there's ridley there's all these other options i don't trust him so again be cautious but again he's one of those guys you can plug in dfs he could have a big week any of these weeks so that's something to be aware of all again other easy matchups odell beckham you would think it's not an easy matchup but i find that pittsburgh's rush defense is better than their secondary so odell has it pretty easy him and landry but again not a guy i fully trust uh willie sneed all those guys there from baltimore from marquise brown all these guys hard to trust marquise brown had a decent game last week but an easy matchup for his position and your guys and my guy, because I got Jefferson, you got Thielen, they got a pretty easy matchup versus Atlanta. This is a must start for both Jefferson and Thielen, man. This is a big week for you, Tim. Thielen should have another monster game, so I'm not worried there. Um, he just, man, he's been a slow starter most of these games. You know, I've been looking at halftime and looking at the stats, and I'm seeing, you know, Thielen with like two catches for 18 yards, for example. And then all of a sudden in the second half, the, the team is down, and they just throw, 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 and he gets her done, baby. So I'm super happy with him. Right. Other easy matchups here. We've got uh, LaVisca Chenault coming off a 15-pointer last week. Not bad. So anyone from Jacksville, like Shark, looking good. Keelan Cole could have a good game, good wild card for DFS. I do a Saturday DFS show, so guys, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, Julian Edelman. Pretty easy matchup, but he hasn't really been phenomenal. He had a good week three weeks ago. Nothing since. I don't trust any of these guys in the kill Harry. All suspect situations. Uh, Tim Patrick's a good matchup this week, I think. He's going to be solid against New England, I think. And again, he had really good volume last game in. Is he going to continue to get that volume? Is Judy going to step up? going to be interesting to see that. And also, if you want to consider these guys, anybody, guys, from Houston versus Tennessee, relatively easy matches for Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks showing he is alive last week with a big game hopefully that continues hopefully he does take on that wide receiver one position and other guys you may want to consider relatively easy matchups are guys like terry mclaurin kyle allen should be back alex smith came out last week but i think they're going to go back to kyle allen there all right buddy that's a wrap up there all right we got to talk about the guys that have it in tough at wide receiver let's go through this man wide receivers from the san francisco 49ers i mean who is the wide receiver one we don't know is it debo is it au sam i i hate 49ers man for fantasy i really do yeah especially this year man the team itself is so banged up you can't rely on anybody here there's nothing good no and then you've got robbie anderson and dj moore who had great weeks last week obviously anderson having a better week he has proven over the past three to four weeks he is the wide receiver one as the counselor suspected uh, having a great, and again, I said this prior to the season, I'm like, who says DJ Moore is the one? Who says that? Yet the mainstream all had DJ Moore, you know, average ADP was around the third or fourth round. I'm like, dude, you're wasting your money. Eight, Robbie Anderson's the guy. So when you're looking at this, man, they do have a tough matchup, arguably the second hardest versus position against Chicago, but I can't sit Robbie Anderson. I just can't. I got to start him. Yeah, he, he is probably, I would consider, their best option there. So he's worth the plug still. You know, don't expect a monster out of him, but he can get you some safe numbers still. Okay, so more tough matchups. The Giants have it in touch, tough against Washington secondary. Slayton coming off a good week. Does have it in tough. Allen Robinson versus Carolina does have it in a little bit tough. And Amari Cooper, believe it or not, does have it tough against Arizona secondary. Not the easiest matchup. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. All suspect at this point because we don't know uh, what 
Andy Dalton is going to do. So this is this is the situation here. So not only are you in a situation where you don't know if they're going to be running it more or throwing it more, but you're in a situation where you've got four receivers that have been worked into the mix and very active from CeeDee Lamb to Cooper to Gallup to Cedric Wilson, who had that big game two to three weeks ago. I don't know who's going to get the ball. Nobody really knows. But it's one of those things where you could just plug one of these guys into a DFS lineup and they can go off, maybe a CD Lamb, and then, boom, they could go off. But you, but you don't know, Tim. So it, it's a dice roll, man. Who would you put your money on? You know, when it comes down to something like this, I actually like to look at the tight end. I like to look at those big, sure-handed guys that are going to get a lot of small passes. So, you know, I, I would kind of stay away from all of them this week. If I had the options, I'm staying away from everything. Dallas. It's really like a coin flip. You got to take a coin. Okay, is it get CeeDee Lamb or is it, you know, Michael got flip? You know what I mean? It's like roulette. Like, I don't know. Like, what are you going to put your money on? It's like a uh, an A-B juju sort of scenario, right? Amari Cooper's still going to be the main guy. He's going to draw the most coverage. So that's why C.D. Lamb's putting up those big numbers. Yeah, that's probably it, man. So, yeah, maybe C.D. Lamb's the guy. He's been the guy the past two weeks. Who knows? Okay, so, yeah, and they got a pretty tough matchup. Uh, any other guys you want to say? Greg Ward, you know, Philly, Travis yeah. Fogel. Travis you, Fogel. you start running into those mid-range ones now, so. Third, well, no, six hardest matchup for his position, Travis Fulgham yeah. last. 34 points, man. Now he's got it in tough against Baltimore, right? So a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, I want some Fulgham in my life. <laughs> and then boom, like he, he has like a crappy game because he's got a tough matchup. So this is one of those scenarios where you got to be careful. Yeah. Uh, Stefan Diggs, a little bit of a tougher matchup versus KC. Seventh hardest versus position. Robert Woods coming off a big week last week. Not, not huge, but 17 points, him and Cooper Cup. They got the eighth hardest matchup versus position. You want to be aware of that. Devontae Adams, I believe he's still questionable versus Tampa Bay. I mean, he's just been a non-factor, man, honestly. Yeah, why even bother this week? Uh, if he's questionable in the least, just don't even bother. Exactly. Uh, again, A.J. Green, can't trust him. T. Higgins, maybe. Again, 10th hardest matchup versus position. So there you have it. A.J. Green, just not, not a guy. I told you, stay away from that guy. All right, let's move on to tight ends. We won't spend too much time on these guys, but we got to talk about them because a lot of people have questions. Let's start off with the guys that have it in easy. Let's just rapid fire here. Kyle Rudolph, Evan Ingram, guys who have good matches. Mind you, Evan Ingram hasn't been great at all, 10 points last week. Kelsey must start versus Buffalo. They play tight ends a little bit weaker there. Mark Andrews has been pretty hot the past couple weeks. TJ Hawkinson has been safe. All easy matchups here. And uh, I would probably say, I mean, it's, you don't have to start them, but, you know, anybody from Pittsburgh, possibly they do have easy matchups. But again, if you're looking at a guy like Eric Ebron, he's very safe at best. Eight points, really unacceptable. Ian Thomas, very easy matchup around eighth easiest first position, but he put up zero points last week, coming off a nine point of the week before. Very, very hard to trust. But Darren Fells, Jordan Aikens, who is the guy there in Houston? They got easy matchups. Fells being the guy the past week, you know, and then the week before it was more Jordan Akins. Who's the guy? And it's very frustrating. You know what I mean? That's why you got to try to aim for the ones on the team. Maybe guys like Hawkinson, guys like that, that you know are going to kind of be the one. There isn't another tight end that's going to come in and, and battle for, for volume. So that's kind of my thoughts on tight ends. Yeah, absolutely. So just to give you a couple of guys in the middle there that could have some good games and are, are better options than others, uh, you know, a guy like a Mike Gusecki, yeah. uh, I want to say Trey Burton, but he's been a non-factor all year. Um, Hayden is right in the, never mind. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> not going to say anything. Let's pass him. Jonu Smith has another pretty decent matchup. You know, look for those middle guys, those guys that, uh, you know, they might not have the best matchup, but they've been doing so well in the red hot. A guy like John, throw them in. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's move on here to the tough matchups. Drew Sample and the Bengals got it in tough. Jimmy Graham, who's been pretty decent. He's been getting a touchdown here and there. 12 points last week. Got it in a little bit tough versus Carolina. Be cautious with him. A lot of people from Washington, you know, there isn't a guy I could trust there, but you never know. Allen could lean to like a guy like Logan Thomas, but they've got it in tough. The tight ends there. Uh, Rob Gronkowski coming off a decent eight point week, safe at best. Uh, got it in bit tough versus Green Bay. Noah Fank got it in tough versus New England. They play tight ends a little bit tougher. Uh, Tyler Eifert got it in tough. Uh, other guys, Gerald Everett coming off a 13 point week. He's got it in tough versus Sam Fran. Higby, I mean, I don't know what happened to Higby, man. I mean, the past three games, three points, five points, eight points. I mean, he had that good week. What was it, one or two? Since then, done nothing, Tim. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. 
Another guy that's starting to slowly come alive is Austin Hooper. So he's he's against the 10th ranked defense. Not not a big deal there. I would feel pretty comfortable putting in Hooper. He's been, you know, I've been watching the Cleveland games a fair bit lately, and he's been getting more use. So he's yeah. not a bad pickup and a, and a relatively decent price, 3900 bucks. And both George Kittle and Robert Tanyan, who've had some great weeks in the past. Now, Kittle, not the greatest week last week, but Tanyan before their bye week, I believe they had a bye week. Uh, before their bye week, 34 points. So Tanyan and Kittle around 13th hardest versus position. But, I mean, guys, you got to start them in year long. There's no reason to sit guys that have been performing like that. Tanyan's going in instead of Hurst again this week. Let me tell you that. I would do that. I would do that. All right, easy matches versus position versus the, at the running back position. James Robinson against Detroit. Let's rapid fire here. Good matchup coming off an 11-pointer last week. Ronald Jones versus Green Bay, 19-point week. Uh, you might want to start him. I think Leonard Fournette is still questionable. Ro Rojo been getting it done, been pre playing pretty solid. Tim, he's had he's had a mini breakout, right? Yeah, he's looking better. The last two games have been really good. You know, I mean, you hyped him huge last year. It didn't pan out this year. Maybe he's starting to come around. So, yeah, I'd feel pretty comfortable putting him in. Uh, David Montgomery. I mean, with David Montgomery, second easiest versus position. There is talk. By the time of this recording, we don't know. Let's talk about running backs. Le'Veon Bell. Again, I don't like it, Tim, that Le'Veon Bell, again, I've always thought he was overrated, a product of the Steelers' offense, came out, kicked and screamed, fighting for money, holding out, being a whiny little bitch, and then finally the sucker of a team that is the Jets, and they are showing that they're a sucker of a team. They're a bunch of losers over there. Acquire and pay Le'Veon Bell kind of what he wanted, and then looking at the stats, he did nothing. And you can blame that partly on the offense and, and them not having weapons. But I believe that's a, a, it's a it's an excuse, honestly. So Le'Veon Bell is a guy who I think made, I don't have the stat. I'm going to pull this up here. I think it was like $28 million in what? Like how many games was it, 17 or something like that? With the Jets, you mean? His, his career with the Jets? Yeah, with the career with the Jets. I think it was like seven to pull this up right here. I'm gonna, this is crazy, man. I just saw this stat yesterday. It's actually embarrassing, man. It really okay. So it was twenty-seven million dollars earned. Okay, seventeen games played with the Jets. Listen to this: zero rushes for twenty-plus attempts on two two hundred and sixty-four attempts. Okay, zero rushes of twenty-plus yards. Zero, zero. Yeah. Okay, guess how many hundred-yard games he had in those seventeen games? At twenty-seven million dollar a man. I'm gonna say only one or two. Zero hundred-yard damn games. zero. And guess how many touchdowns in 17 games and 264 attempts for Le'Veon Bell with the Jets? How many touchdowns? Between four and six. Four touchdowns. <sighs> and I don't care how crappy the Jets are. If you are a good player, you will break out for a couple of runs. You'll do some good things. He's not good. Part of Le'Veon Bell's game was that he's a patient runner. So he'd come up to the line of scrimmage, do a little juke thing. It's a little bit of dance. It's always good, or his box, his his bad boxing moves, stuff like that, and he would just kind of have that time, and he kind of burst through the hole. Well, he doesn't have the burst anymore. Uh, he doesn't have time to run because he was kind of behind that Steelers O line, and he doesn't have Antonio Brown to spread the field, Tim. So the defenses are probably focusing on him. So again, in his defense, maybe more stacked boxes in the time that he's with the Jets. But when you look at a guy like Le'Veon Bell. And at the time of this recording, we don't know what team he's going to land on. There is talk that it might be the Chiefs, it might be the Bears, it might be Miami because I guess he trains out of Miami. But again, I'm not sold on Le'Veon Bell. Wherever he goes, he won't succeed because he's not that good. He is beyond overrated. He's a bit of a dick, and he's a huge narcissist. Now, if you guys remember, and I speak out of experience because I was the one that said, hey, I don't think this guy is good, and I was right. I said, if he goes to the Jets, Tim, He's going to crap the bed. Sure enough, he did. I, I said that. I called him out. I was right. I said that on social media. I saw him boxing. I, I, I asked him to pretty much box me in a charity match. He posted me in a story mode saying, I'm not going to give this guy attention that I'm out of shape. I will still box Le'Veon Bell. Give me the date. Give me the time. Give me the trainer. I will get in the best shape of my life. And I will smoke him in a box. He wouldn't even stand a chance. A lot of people say, Joe, he's a professional athlete. Yeah, but he's not trained. I don't think you guy's even been hit in the face. The guy's a pretty boy narcissist. So Okay, let's get back to football. No, this is football, Tim. We're talking about this. So Le'Veon Bell, my prediction, he will not succeed wherever he ends up. I assure you that that's the bottom line. He's he's not going to be the Le'Veon Bell he was with Pittsburgh. And you say it right. He was a patient runner. He could sit there. He could wait for a hole to open and then bash through it. He, he's not getting that anymore. I think even if he does get it now, it's still not going to be quite the same. 
So yeah, to me, he'll still be a decent running back. He's still a good pickup somewhere, but he's not going to be what he was two years ago. Wherever he ends up, he will bust, and I hopefully doesn't end up with the Chiefs to buzz kill Clyde Edwards there, who you called it actually has not been performing up to par. And I warned people about this. I warned people about a couple things about Alaire. It's a huge risky top six picks because he was coming off top six Alaire. And he's just not performing to that level. And the big concern is volume. They throw the ball a lot, right? Will he get that volume? Will he get integrated? And of course, the threat of someone else coming in like a veteran to come in because they want that goal line back. And again, he hasn't been good near the goal line. So again, by the time of this recording, Le'Veon Bell could end up with the Chiefs, Bears, Dolphins, all candidates, maybe even the Patriots. We don't know. But wherever he ends up, I don't see him doing well. And hopefully he doesn't go in there and kill the little buzz that Clyde Edwards there has. Let's move, <laughs> let's move on here. Yeah, that would suck for them. All right. So other guys that have an easy matchup here, Derrick Henry, easy matchup versus position 19th. I think, I'm sorry, 19 points last week, fourth easiest matchup versus position. Again, with Derrick Henry, I don't know, man. I mean, he had a good week. A touchdown saved him last week, really. And uh, other than that, man, it's, it's volume with Henry, which is one thing that I love. And he gets the volume. He's the guy. Now, they were bringing in whatever his name was, McNichols or whatever his name was. They were bringing in Darrington Evans, giving Henry a little bit of break here and there. So that's a bit of a problem. I was seeing that last game, Tim. I don't know if that's going to be a concern moving forward when they were playing the Bills. Now, in that game, I was happy because I had Tannehill. And I was in this matchup, and I was playing Tannehill versus him. And at the end of the day, I'm happy Tannehill outscored him. But if you're a Henry owner, I'd be a little concerned that they are integrating more of a committee there, Tim. A wee bit, let's say. So let's look at the last three games. Um, Henry went from the number of carries were 25, 26, 19. Right. And then a guy like McNichols was 2, 0, 9. So it was really only the last game where he really started yeah. chewing into it a little bit. Let's just see if that was an anomaly or if they are going to try to rest Henry a little more, which I don't think makes any sense. He is a hardcore rusher. That is what you got him for. Just pound that ball with him and he should do it again this week. Mind you, um, they were up near the end of that game. They were up. So I'm thinking that, you know, if some of that volume came in near the end of the game where they did rest Henry. So, I mean, yeah, we're going to have to watch a couple more games to see what happens there. All right. Other easy matchups, Jordan Howard. I mean, he's done nothing, but Miami Dolphins, anyone running from that from them has an easy matchup. The main guy being Miles Gaskin kind of taking the reins there. 20 points last week, all those guys. But again, Miles is the guy if you want to start somebody there. David Johnson. Pretty easy matchup versus position, but he has been safe at best. Now, a lot of people criticize me for David Johnson, but I will tell you this. He hasn't been spectacular, but he is putting up double-digit points, low double-digit points, 11, 12 points each game, right? And he's been a solid flex play at best. Now, you can't, and he was a third to fourth round pick. You can't say the same about Nick Chubb, zero points. He's been injured, right? Austin Eckler, Kenyon Drake, all guys that were drafted ahead of David Johnson, not performing anywhere near their ADP. At least David Johnson is putting up double digits, not anywhere near where I expected in regards to performance. But now with the coaching change, hopefully things change. Houston didn't make the coaching change, did have the win. Hopefully things brighten up here for David Johnson in an easy matchup versus position going into NFL week six. Yeah, man, both of us were pretty high on David Johnson this year. And after game one, you were pretty hype about him. You thought I was like, nah, man, let's wait and see. I thought he looked kind of sluggish and didn't have it. Sure enough, it, it doesn't seem to be the David Johnson from what, three, four years ago. He's just yeah. not the same guy. Let's face it. So he is decent. He's He's holding his own, but he's nothing spectacular anymore. He might put up one or two monsters this year, and that'll be it. Slow and steady wins the race, Tim, and that's all he is doing. Uh, other easy matchups, Zeke Elliott, pretty easy matchup versus Arizona, and Jonathan Taylor. Also, if you want to consider starting him, which I won't either Swift or Adrian Peterson have pretty easy matchups as well, but not guys that I really like to consider. All right, let's wrap this up with the toughest matchup versus position. Guys, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up, leave your starts and sits questions below, and uh, let's get to this. All right, so, I mean, New England, I really don't start any running back from here, so I stay away. But, you know, your Rex Burkheads of the world who had a huge week a couple weeks ago, then had a dud the week after. James White, all these guys, safe and boring. Daryl Henderson, great week last week, 22 points. Cam Akers now back into the mix. How much are they going to put him in uh, versus Sam Fran? Either way, they all got it in tough. Hopefully, they use Akers a bit more coming off that uh, rib injury. Uh, Joe Mixon, two weeks ago, 45 points, came back, laid a dud with 15 points last week. I don't know what happens with Joe Mixon this week, but I know he's got it in tough with, with uh, Indianapolis, so I'd be cautious. 
Uh, Miles Sanders. Now, there was talk about Le'Veon Bell potentially going to the Eagles. Head coach said that Miles Sanders is the guy. They believe in him as a three-down back, and I respect that, Tim. Finally, a coach who sticks up for his guy and believes in him. I like it. Yeah, once again, though, you look at his numbers, and he, he is used in the receiving game as well. So his number of rushes, I mean, you should be pissed off. He's not a workhorse back, Joe. He's only getting 11, 13, 18 rushes the last right. three games. And that's reflecting in his points. I mean, 10 points, 15 points uh, the past uh, you know, not last week he had 24, but he had that big touchdown run. But if, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for the receptions, he, he'd be getting nothing, really. I mean, in standard leagues. But, yeah, he's got to start getting a little more attempts, a little more volume, I think, for sure. Yep. Uh, Kareem Hunt's going to be safe and solid every week. He's he's kind of the man there. Uh, Dearness Johnson, a lot of hype around him off the waiver wire. Didn't perform up to par. Um, again, here's another one. D Denver, be cautious. I would probably consider starting Philip Lindsay. He should be good to go this week. He's finally healthy. Melvin Gordon had a DUI, apparently did not go to jail, but I haven't read if there's any repercussions for that behavior, if he's going to be playing or not. Have you heard anything about that? I'm just hearing that he's questionable. I don't know if it is. I, I believe it's related to the offense uh, that he's being charged with. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going to play. I know. By the time again, I don't have any stock in Melvin Gordon, so I haven't really dove into this. And it's a guy that I told you to stay away from in that committee. There, we talked about Freeman and, and Lindsey being a pest. But why would you go get a DUI? This is what I want to talk about. Let's talk about this. So, and I'm going to start breaking these videos down, Tim, into small videos and putting them out as individuals, so people want to know certain news. So I don't mind talking a little bit and elaborating on certain things. But if you're looking at Melvin Gordon, Tim, I mean, you're you're a professional athlete. You're you're the starter on the Broncos. My first question is, you're a professional athlete. Why are you drinking during the season? I mean, that's my first question. I'm okay with that, you know, if, if it's in moderation. Okay. My my second question is, have you heard of Uber? Have you Do you, yeah. do you have money? You're a professional. Do you not have money? Yeah. Like, if you're making millions of dollars a year, why are you not throwing? Like I say, if it has to be an Uber, Throw twenty to fifty dollars in an Uber. Who cares? But most of the time, these guys probably have some kind of service on call, even that they could just call and get basically a limousine or a driver to come pick a them chauffeur. up. If I'm Melvin Gordon, I'm ordering a chauffeur. I'm ordering uh, a limousine. I'm ordering premium service. If I'm, let's say, going to a club during the season and drinking, which I shouldn't be doing because I'm a professional athlete and I value what I'm doing. If I am a professional athlete and this is my job and this is my priority and I'm trying to leave a legacy and I'm trying to be I, you know, one of the best running backs in the game because I, I I lied and bitched and cried about how I wasn't getting paid enough. And if I'm a professional athlete and I get the starting job and I'm on the Broncos, I would not be out drinking. And that's just me, right? Especially during the season. And if you are drinking, why are you not taking care of yourself? How could you pause? And then you're speeding to, to, to boot. So you're speeding and you're getting caught. So if you are drinking, which you shouldn't be, and you are driving, which you shouldn't be, why are you speeding? <laughs> Like, I, I, like, there's no logic here. Like, where's the common sense? This is why I keep saying common sense is not that common, Tim. Yeah, I say that all the time. That's one of my favorite sayings. Uh, Melvin Gordon, what an idiot. So anyway, it is what it is. Uh, fortunate for him, he did not get arrested. But again, stupid, stupid behavior. And and again, it's around that time of season where I guess players get bored and you're going to hear about an arrest. Or expect more from certain players. And it's just going to happen. I mean, you always hear the, the, something in the news. Someone beating somebody up or someone getting arrested or someone DUI or someone gets suspended or someone spitting on somebody or someone starting a fight by the sideline. You always hear this stuff, man. So hopefully for everybody's sake, and for fantasy sakes, if you own any of these players, there isn't any uh, DUIs or anything going on this year. All right, so let's keep going here. Aaron Jones, tough matchup here versus position. Uh, James Conner has got it in tough as well. Now, James Conner has been pretty safe and steady. Not phenomenal, but pretty safe and steady there. Um, anyone else, Tim, that we should be mentioning has got it in tough? No, I mean, I'm looking at the San Fran running backs, you know, and we talked about it. San Fran is so beat up. You never know what you're going to get, but Mostert and McKinnon, you know, th there's some options there. You know, they're Mostert's a fair price. He's 6,300 bucks right now on most of your sites. Um, right. McKinnon yeah. is 4,300. So if you want to take a roll of the dice, you're, you know, you've, you've blown your wad already. Maybe a McKinnon. Now I got to tell you, man, I almost won. Listen to this. This is crazy for DFS, Tim. So I was playing DFS and it was uh, it was uh, during that what is it, Tuesday nighter. It was between the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Bills. And there's a ma multiplier on the top player, which was Tannehill. So I had the top score in Tannehill 
I had all the right players. Okay. I still put up like 96 points, but I won 20 bucks. There's 132,000 people and there's 132,000. My 96 points put me in 5,000th place. The difference between me and the top guys that won, I think there was a four or five, I don't know how the pot was split, but apparently the difference was Tim, I think 13 or 14 or 15 points, something like that. The only difference is I think they had like TJ yelled and I had the kicker. I think that was like the only difference. There was another player. Either way, they won $72,000. I won 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. That's what you got to love about those GPPs, man. It, it, it's essentially all or nothing. Like yeah. I, I had one a week ago too, where I was in the top 10% and I basically just doubled my money. You know, it's, it's nothing to brag about, but any one player, man, that's all the difference it makes. Mine was the same sort of deal. Mine was a multiplier. And if you don't have the right guy at the right multiplier, that kills you. It's so crazy because my lineup was so good and I beat 125,000 people with my lineup, but it was the 5,000 people that beat me that, that really made the difference between 72,000 and 20 bucks. And those guys that, that won the 72,000, it's not like you knew it's a luck thing. It's a luck thing when it comes to DFS. You can't tell me you knew that TJ other was going to get 10 or 11 points. And he was your fifth option on that team in the budget. Like you can't, you don't know that nobody really knows that. So yeah, those GPPs are crazy. It's just, a, it's a roll of the dice. All right, Tim. I mean, that's it. Um, Mike Davis, Clyde Edwards, Lair, other guys that you may want to consider as options. And that's pretty much it here at the uh, running back position. Yep. You got it, man. All right, guys, make sure you smash thumbs up, leave your starts and six questions below. Hope you enjoyed the episode and Tim's hair is growing out. So leave those thumbs up. I'll probably still shave it anyways, but I still want the ability to say I have hair. That's it. All right, guys, we're out. Thanks. Enjoy week six and uh, we will see you. I'll be back Saturday. Talk soon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.